my goal for these episodes is that with every topic we discussed, we have a guest who has actually walked within that topic in their own life. How do you get more of an expert than that? I know that there are thousands of women who struggle with infertility every year, and with the introduction of social media, it has only made it that more obvious that everyone but them is having a baby. When I was thinking about this episode, I knew immediately who I wanted on as my guest. Not a doctor, not a therapist, not an agency. I wanted my friend Melissa, and I hoped that she would say yes. Her and her husband Matt struggle on their journey to becoming parents. Years of highs and lows, hope and disappointment, all make up her story and what I believe so many of you will relate to. I even learned things about her story that I didn't know. We go into all the details about infertility, pregnancy loss, and failed adoptions. There is a happy ending to their story, but the road there was the one that honestly could have been made into a movie. I hope you enjoy listening as much as I did, and if you know anyone struggling with infertility right now, I would encourage you to share this with them. Without further ado, let's get to it. Here's my conversation with my friend, Melissa Wilson. Well, welcome to the podcast, Melissa Wilson. I'm so excited to have you here today. I'm going to introduce you uh, before we get started. So Melissa and I have been friends, I don't even know what year, how long? I don't even know what year. 10 years, maybe? Probably. Nine nine or 10 years. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, And I really, really wanted to do an episode on infertility and adoption and when I thought, how am I going to approach this? Uh, I've never been someone who's been through adoption. And kind of like the other episodes we've done, rather than get, uh, you know, someone who's a doctor or a lawyer or someone like that on, I would really wanted to get someone on that had the actual been there, boots on the ground experience. And I could not think of anyone better than you. And I wasn't sure if you were going to say yes. I didn't know (laughs) if you were fine with sharing your story because I knew your story and just knew the craziness um, and the happiness of all of it. But I'm very happy you said yes. Oh, thank you for having me. So welcome. (laughs) Um, Okay. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, You... Married your husband, Matt. Still yes. married. Yeah. We love Matt. 20 years strong. Is it 20 years? Mm-hmm. How old were you when you got married? 23. 23. Did you get married and kind of say, this is when we want to have kids? Did you talk about it? We did. Both of our parents got divorced at 27 years. So okay. we said, why don't we take our time? Like, okay. what's the hurry? Right. Why are we going to rush to start it? What We're young. We have plenty of time. Let's wait good five years. Five years. Five years came around. We were like, well, let's wait a little bit longer. So it was more like six and a half before we were like, and then we just, we thought you just tried and then yeah. just a baby, a baby came right, right after you tried. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Because did a lot of your friends have babies at the time? Mm, starting to, but no one had fertility issues okay. really. So, so you then, were like 30 then or by this time you're around 30 I'm, when you start, start trying? We were, I was probably 29. We kind of started trying. Okay. Um, and then we would kind of try and then kind of wouldn't try. And you kind of were like, well, you know, we weren't following, we weren't taking all the tests or yeah. doing anything crazy. And then we get pregnant and we lose the baby. Mm-hmm. And then we talk to the doctor. They're like, oh, just keep trying. So we get do it again, get pregnant. Well, I had endometriosis. So then okay. finally the doctor said, why don't we just go in, clean you out, yep. and see what happens from there. Said, wait a couple weeks after the surgery, end up pregnant again. Another miscarriage. So then we can see specialists and we start you know, diving in a little bit deeper. And then we just totally stop getting pregnant. Like, it just doesn't happen anymore. Mm-hmm. We were like, hmm. Huh. Okay. So we finally got to the point where it's like, okay, well, let's go to natural fertility and let's just go see what they have to say. We're not yeah. committing. We are not committing to doing this. I'm not even sure I want to do drugs mm-hmm. at this point. And they were like, well, let's, let's try you on something. Since it's been this long, let's try Clomid. So we tried Clomid. What's it, Clomid? It's a, it helps, helps you get pregnant. It's one of those fertility drugs that makes you kind of crazy. Okay. Like it just, it messes with your emotions. It, it's, it's a hormone. It's a hormone. Yes. Is it so, to like make you ovulate more or do you even know? No, I don't, I don't know. know. They give it, it's popular for fertility. It's the first it's drug they'll always give you. Okay. Clomid is like the number one thing they're going to give you. They don't tell you to take vitamins or minerals. They're like, here's some Clomid. Okay. Clomid doesn't work. Well, then the next step is an IUI where they just basically, when you're, when you are ovulating mm-hmm. and at this point you've taken some Clomid or there's also another one that you can take as well, but Clomid was fine for me. So I kept taking Clomid. So when you're ovulating, they just, your husband comes in and leaves a sample yeah. and they basically take a syringe and they, while you're ovulating, 
they give you an IUI. So this is like artif- is that like artificial insemination? Is that no the same? I mean, I guess it's a version of it, but okay. it's they're not. They okay. Let me revise. When they with an IUI, they actually they take the sperm and they spin it and they only give you his good sperm. Gotcha. They don't give you the junk. Gotcha. So you only get good stuff. Okay. So we had four of those and they never took. And then mm-hmm. they said, okay, it's time. Well, had you been tested? Had like do they do testing on you? They, hear about people getting tested. You get to your, see if there's something going on. Yes, and mine. They kept saying unexplained, like because okay. my egg reserve was low, but it wasn't like they were like this is nothing. Yeah. Like crazy. Matt would get tested. They were like, well, his sperm is fine, so yeah. it's not really making sense. So they said, let's do IVF. Well, then I said, we're gonna have to take a break. We've been doing all this stuff for months. I mentally need, you know, you, you know, it's hard because you're having to drive to Nashville, you know, two and three times a week, you know. To, Did you tell people you were doing this? You had, I had no choice but to tell my boss because I was mm-hmm. missing so much. Like you're missing so much work. Because of appointments? Appointments. Do you feel physically fine or is it taking a toll? It takes a toll the on you. Okay. Because it also takes a toll on your marriage because you're mm-hmm. also, you're trying, you're trying to time everything. Like I got to go to the doctor these days. I've got to make sure we're getting the medicine these days. Mm-hmm. You, if you have to take shots, you know, it, it's, it's a lot. And you guys had just been like these newlyweds for six years. Oh yeah. We weren't with, even worried. Yeah. And I mean, and this was, I was in my thirties when we really started hardcore. Cause even once you get your appointment, it takes a while to mm-hmm. get in. You know, I want to say it took us three months to get our first appointment at Nashville Fertility. Mm-hmm. When there's three months, you kind of also talk to you. You're like, oh, we're going to be fine. Yeah. We're going to be. I mean, because I we didn't know anybody that was having issues right. getting pregnant. I mean, we really did not know anybody having mm-hmm. these issues. But we also didn't tell everybody. But at this point, everybody you see, when are you having babies? Mm-hmm. When are you having babies? When are you having babies? I just wonder, I mean, you must, more than anybody, just that question from people. It's just such a question people always well no one wants to see you cry when you answer that question yeah. you say oh one day we're just enjoying life I can remember saying that every single you day did. to people one day we're just enjoying what we're doing did right you now. ever just break down and say well we're actually behind trying. a door no, no I never said it to anybody else mm-hmm. no I mean like my sister would know of yeah. course but um no you don't you don't you don't want to put your burden on other people yeah I mean looking back maybe you should have but I I don't know I don't know but once uh, we'd had a couple rounds of, we would, we finally started with IVF and every time they'd be like, there's only one egg. Well, you don't really want to retrieve one egg because the likelihood of that egg being a good egg. Mm-hmm. And then by the time that they, they fertilize that the embryo, like they all, they said the goal was six. They were like, let's, let's get you six eggs because 50% of those eggs aren't going to be viable eggs. And are you taking medicine to try to get more eggs at this time? Yes. Before, you're for injecting your stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. And there's another element to that when you're doing IVF you have to get refrigerated drugs. So you've got to be, so you're worried about appointments. You're mm-hmm. trying to keep a job. You're trying to stay sane. And then you're trying to find the FedEx truck with your refrigerated drugs. Oh my gosh. You know, that you got to get into a refrigerator and you know, you know, FedEx's window is going to yeah. be like eight to 12. So then you send them to your work because you're like, well, I got to get them there. But so they, you would have FedEx coming to your job? I had to, because I had to get the shots. Wow. So, you know, and you have to get them in a the refrigerator, like as soon, I mean, they come in an ice pack, but you still, you don't want to leave them out. Yeah. Like syringes? Is that yeah. what you're, you're mm-hmm. injecting yourself? Okay. Yeah. You're injecting yourself. Um, and then you all, here's another level. You have to take what's called an IVF class. Mm-hmm. I mean, Matt and I, we probably- Why do you have to take, what's the, what's the class for? To learn how to give yourself the oh, shot because sh- you have to mix <laughs> medicines. Oh. And you have to make sure you click at this, mo- you know, this number of times. Yeah. Like, I mean, IVF is stressful. Like, yeah. I'm surprised the success rate is so high because you're just so stressed. Not if people don't just stop and give up. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we essentially, we yeah. would do it. Like we would, I would tell Matt, I'm like, okay, there's only one egg. We're obviously, they're telling us not to do this. They're the professionals. We need to listen to what they're mm-hmm. saying. So let's stop. But, but I'd be like, Matt, I need, I need a couple months off. Like I cannot put any more drugs in this body. So when they're saying you only have one, does that mean then we need to start another cycle? Okay. And then so hopefully So but you have to stop. You gotta get every you gotta let your body reset uh, and then you start over. But Because I it's like help. the cycle means okay, we're stopping this, she's gonna get her period, and then we're starting again. Is that like how the cycle kind of works? You can. Okay. But mentally I was never I would always be like because mm. you're um, again trying to keep this tight schedule of you're trying to work, you're trying to, you know, have a yeah. decent marriage, but you're just stressed out yeah. all the time of and, and you desperately want it. Is this gonna work? Is this yeah. the time? And is it all you're talking about at home? Yes. Because you really don't have really anyone else to talk to unless you've shared it with people. Right. And we didn't really share with people because it's our burden. Yeah. You know, and I'm me saying yes to this was very much a surprise because I am mm. mostly quiet about things. Yeah. So there's also, I mean, you know, we met working out. Yep. When you're doing IVF, you can't work out. Mm. And that's... Why can you not work out? Uh, you're on all these drugs and you don't want your um, ovaries to flip. 
So oh. if you're bouncing, so you could go for a walk, but yeah. you know, our workout was not yeah. going for- You can't for be a, doing a lot. Yeah. yeah. You couldn't do yeah. that. So, and you know, that keeps you mentally sane. Does this, this might be a stupid question, but like, did Matt have to do anything for IVF? Is that a, like, does he have to take anything? There's no drugs that the men take. Men don't. Okay. It's I mean- it's I mean, solely I, on what well, because for his, you, yeah. for his sperm count was fine though. So okay. maybe if his sperm count wasn't fine, there right. would be something they would do. But his sperm count was always fine. Okay. So, but I, I bet there is surely nowadays. I, I, I have okay. no idea. All right, I haven't heard of it, but maybe. Okay, so you do the one cycle, one egg. They're not going to take it. You're going to do take another a, cycle, but I'm going to take a break. You take a break, and then we would do it again. Like and how long a break would you take? Three or four months. Oh, okay. I just mentally, I, I just. Yeah. When you're going into that office every day, though, too, and you just see there's a lot of sadness there because mm -hmm. people are not getting the news. Like, you know, when I came out of that room and there, there'd be, there, I think there's three three rooms right where you are, but then you, there's other women out here waiting and you come out and you're just in tears mm -hmm. and you're the one waiting and you see somebody and you're like, man, they didn't get good news again today. It just makes you sad. Yeah. So, and you're already getting bad news. You see other people or you see people that are getting great news. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that it's wonderful, but then you want to be in their situation. Yeah. Like, like why, can it, why couldn't I have been the one coming yeah. out of that room happy? Were you on social media at the time? Like how often yeah, you wonder that when was. I see like all the pregnancy announcements and stuff? Was yeah. that, were you I seeing didn't, that? I, yes, and I also had so many friends getting pregnant. Yeah, the, yeah. That Just, would be hard. Yeah. I mean, my sister. I mean, my mm -hmm. sister had to call me one day and she was like, oh, and it's not that you're not happy for them. Right. But she just knows I was longing yes. for that. And she had to call you and say she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, I, of course you're happy for, yeah. you're happy for everybody. It just, you're like, why not me? Why not, why not me? me this time? Yeah. So I think it was like our fourth IVF cycle that wasn't going well. And I finally said to him, this isn't, an, this, this isn't our route to a Did family. you ever get more eggs where they took the no. eggs? You never got more than the one? Mm -hmm. Every time I would just get one or I get none. I mean, there was times we wouldn't get none. There was one time actually... Um, they gave, had given me so much drugs that I ended up getting a cyst that had to be surgically removed. So there, that that puts you out another six months because you got to go in. We got to plan your surgery. Mm -hmm. You got to go get the cyst removed. When, I, when they were in there that time, I was like, hey, I'm going to be under. Let's get the rest of the, you know, any, any injury choices you see, yeah. let's take it out while we're there. And so, but that puts you back another six, six yeah. months easily. And they had no explanation? No, unexplained Just infertility. And that happens a lot. Yeah. It's, it's more common than you think. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like I hear a lot of people talking about that just on social media now, unexplained, unexplained, which would it have been easier to have an answer? Like, would it have been easier for them to say, you have a I don't know, tilted uterus, you have a uterus that will never have a baby? Like, would it have been easier to have a final? Yes, because then you would have moved on to what is your next step? Or are you going to be okay with mm -hmm. that? I mean, so many people are great without having kids. That yeah. I just longed for a family. My husband longed to be a father. Mm -hmm. So we knew it was November of 2017 was our last. And it was, and I was always having fertility during the holidays, which mm -hmm. just would make it, you know, even more emotional. And yeah. November, I had another non-good cycle. And I said, that's it. I, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, he supported. He said, whatever you want to do, we can revisit it. It's not a big deal. And by January of 2018, I had contacted an, um, a place to do our home study so that we could start the process of adoption because adoption and foster, the process to begin with is the mm -hmm. same. So you have to get the home study approved. So that was end of January when we got our application. And I, when I say I put the pedal to the metal, I mean, yeah. I went full was steam he, ahead. When you say you made that decision at the end of 2017, did, was he, full, like, was Matt fully on board with, with what you were wanting to do? Did he think you should keep trying? He's, he said, kind of no. hard, I guess, probably to put that on you. Um, yeah, but he was, no, he so he had seen enough too. He, he was said, done. He said, I can't ask you to do that anymore. Okay. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, we would take a road trip. And if I was in a cycle, I mean, we'd have to pull over and give me shots mm -hmm. on the side of the road. You know, he just said, you're right. Yeah. It's not working. There's had a reason you, it's not working. Had you ever thought before in your life about adoption? Thoughts we had. Or? We had thought in our life that maybe we would adopt, but after we had yeah. biological, mm -hmm. we, biological was just was our priority. Yeah. I didn't, who, who would have known yeah. that that wouldn't have happened? But so it was kind of always in the back of my mind, but not anything that we weren't ready to talk about that yet. Mm -hmm. But I mean, maybe, I mean, I guess people should open your eyes and how, yeah. it, how it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. Who knows? When, so when you decide at the end of 2017, I'm going to start exploring the route of adoption or foster, did you tell anyone at this point? Your sister? We 
didn't tell anybody till we were home study approved, except for you have to get letters of recommendation. Okay. So we had to tell the few people that you have to, I think you have to have six letters of recommendation, like from an employer or a family member. And it's a pretty lengthy, like they asked them to write a pretty lengthy. So you had to kind of tell those people, but just said, and it was just more, we're exploring our options. Was it foster care or adoption or was foster care the road to adoption? Like how does the system working so for you to adopt? You have to get home study approved and okay. to foster or just domestically adopt. Okay, so is the same. The, that, the starting process is the same. It's your fingerprints. It's going to the sheriff's department, proving that you don't have a record. It's pulling tax returns for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, it's paperwork, but I mean, I took it as a full-time job yeah. and like I had us done by March because I was like, okay, we're going to do this. Like, Did you have a lawyer? Do you have to get a lawyer? You don't. You, so you can adopt through a lawyer. Okay. So at this point, we didn't need a but lawyer. But to get approved and all that, no. you don't. Okay. You just have to, you have to read is, books, watch classes. I mean, there's, it's a process to do it all. Is this for international too or just domestic? Just domestic. Okay. Did so, you thought international, domestic, did you care? So we had talked about international and we, it just wasn't for us. We said we knew we wanted to do domestic. Okay. Um, International, there's a lot of travel. Mm. There's, you know, staying over there 30 days in certain countries. There's certain countries that want your IQ before you can be considered to adopt. So that we just knew that. We were like, that's just not for us. We're just we're just going to stay domestic yeah, yeah. and we'll just kind of see what happens. Because I've heard it's easier. Is it easy? Well, this, I don't know. Is it easier to adopt internationally than domestically? I think I think it depends on the country. Okay. And the the laws change all the time. So mm-hmm. you could be in the middle of an adoption right. that you and thought the laws was going to be. I've heard they that. They change all the time. Okay. That was another thing. In the United States, the laws are pretty much state to state. Yeah. You kind of know what you're getting with. And now every state is different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But we also thought we like, who? how could we tell our employers, hey, we're going to be gone for 30 days yeah. while we stay and wait for all the clearance to get back into the United States. Yeah. We're like, let's just, we'll okay. just do domestic. And I do know a lot of people like international too, because- you don't have to worry about the birth parent, like mm-hmm. it all interfering. Right. And so I do, I mean, that, I mean, depending if you want to close or an open adoption. Right. So, and that's okay. when you're actually doing your home study, you learn a lot about closing um, open adoptions okay. and fostering. But if once your home study approved, you can, you tell them at the beginning, are you going to foster or are you going to adopt? And we said it for, originally, we said we will, we'll adopt. Like okay. we're not really looking to foster And at this do point. you request an age? Do you request, we want a newborn? You do you can, say, I'm open to anything? You can, what did you guys say? You can tell whether you're, so we decided not to work with an agency right away. We went with a consultant. And What's so you the tell her. An agency, um, they have more of an, umbra- I don't know if that's not the right word. Um, more of a network? Yeah. Um, a consultant, she can kind of be watching this agency and this agency and this okay. agency. And she can be like, okay, go apply over at that agency. Okay. But with your, when you're with an agency, you're just with the agency mm. and you're only going to get their birth mom. So okay. we had started with the consultant who helped us make. How did you find, a, for someone listening, how do you find a consultant? You can you find Googling it. Googling? You can. You... And Facebook and Instagram are amazing resources. Okay. We did not have that as much mm-hmm. um, for it or it would be five years ago, um, but they are amazing now. So what's someone searching for on Facebook or Instagram? You would look up consulting firms or okay. look up a, like a, there's a Facebook um, group that we follow, Domestic um, Adoptions mm-hmm. is exactly what it's called. And they always, like, you can ask questions like, oh, I'm going to look, I was looking at this uh, consultant. Does anybody have good or bad feedback? Oh, and they okay. can tell you. Yeah. So, so like real recommendations. Real recommendations. Like, oh, has anybody had any luck um, using this consultant? Or uh, what if I sign with this agency? What? How long did it take you to adopt from this okay. agency? Because we were told once your home study approved, most people are matched with an adoption within six months. Okay. So we were like, okay, that's not that long. Like mm-hmm. six months is not that long. We finished at the end of March and our very first person, our consultant, um, showed the attorney it was in florida she showed them our book um the birth parent and now you got to realize the birth- what's a book it's me show you your book it's like oh. your bio kind of but it's a hardback book and it's literally pictures it's a highlight of your life it's, who makes it you can make them on uh but Snapchat. you like you make it yourself your consultant our, our consultant she we makes gave her the pictures okay. and then she helped us make it like with the wording and everything okay because you want it to look because here's for the, the birth mother to look yeah, so, and you want it to be shiny and pretty because mm. you want her to look at it. Because um, yeah. you'll know, like, 
if you're with an agency and your book gets pulled, they'll say, mm-hmm. oh, your book got pulled today. They're going to show to a birth mother. And then if you don't hear anything, you know that that birth mother wasn't interested. Okay. Now, to me, it's so scary because it's like that book is that yeah. book is selling you. I yes. mean, that book is literally selling. Mm-hmm. We got very lucky the first time our book was shown to an attorney who had a birth mother. Um, she picked us. So this was in, because you, okay, so now we're in 2018, We're in right? 2018. We're not we're even a April. year. April, so you're not even a year after deciding we're done no. with fertility. I mean, we just. This is quick. It was quick. Yeah. But we were so ready. We had tried yeah. for so long on and off. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, let's do this. If we're going to do it. Right. I mean, we're not and getting younger. Were you in a space with adoption because you were so new to it that you thought, okay, this is it. This was just meant to be. They picked us. This is great. We yeah. got what we wanted. It's April. So you get a call from your consultant saying, so there's a there's a situation. Well, most of the time we would text an email. She said there's a situation in Florida with this attorney. Um, he has good and bad reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, he lays it out on the line. He's fairly expensive, but he's he usually doesn't take a birth mother that he's not pretty sure she's going to sign in the end. Okay, and so we were picked. Um, they said, fly to Florida They because you immediately come and meet. Like within like eight days, you come meet this birth mother. Is the birth mother picking you or is the attorney picking the you? Birth mother. The birth mother. The birth mother and father usually always pick you. Okay. Um, now, whether it's closed or open can be different. So we actually went and met with her and um, the birth father. And they'd been together a long time. They had other adopted children. So the likelihood of it happening, we knew was pretty slim. Or I mean, pretty good because she wasn't keeping her children. She had other children. She had adopted out. Yes. Okay. Um, and multiple other okay. children. And they were all with the same birth father. Mm-hmm. They just weren't able to parent. And okay. they knew that. And so they chose us. We go home, have contact with her, text with her, you know. How we, far we, along is she at this point? She's 24, 25 weeks. Okay. She's pretty She's pretty good yeah. along. Um, and we get a call two weeks later that there had been an accident and the baby was no longer. Mm. We didn't, I mean, and to us, you know, like I, I mean, we thought here's our, it's finally, we've been through, we've yeah. been through everything and here we finally mm-hmm. got what we, we thought we would got. And then the attorney said, I don't know that in my years this has ever happened. The hard part is you lose so much money mm-hmm. in these situations because he's, in, the attorney's invested his time. So you mm-hmm. have all his billable hours, all the drug testing, the mental testing he does because he wants so to make So you're sure. still paying this attorney even though there's no baby? Well, you gave a retainer and the retainer's non-refundable. Okay. Because wow. it's all the work he's put in. Because he's, he's, he's been working with her for weeks. Right. I mean, do I agree? Not necessarily. Yeah. But I... He did put in the work. He and put in the work. And he no told more. you up front. So you knew up front okay. what you were signing when you signed the piece of paper. But in a million years, could you imagine... No. ...that the baby was no longer? What kind of... Do you even know what kind of accident? Like... Her and her brother car- got in a physical altercation. Oh, wow. So, um... Are you... So you said how long? How long had you known her when you like signed two up? weeks? Not long, yeah. But enough in my mind. But I was you're so invested. desperate. I you're was, invested. Yes, and I was so desperate yes. for what I thought she was giving us. Right. I mean, it. it I'm sure to a person who's not in, is not doing this, it doesn't sound sane, and I understand that. I actually think it sounds sane, and I've not done it. I mean, I can just from being pregnant. You're pregnant for, and there's women that lose babies, like, you know, to you, like miscarriages. You've never met them. You've maybe even never heard a heartbeat. You just know, and you can't believe how connected you are to something that never was. So I don't think it sounds crazy at all. I left work when he called. I mean, Matt, like, dropped everything to came and picked me up because I was like, I can't drive. Like, I cannot, I can't Mm. believe with what we've been through that this is happening again. Yeah. And I also knew the financial burden Mm. it was going to put on our family. We've just been through, you know, IVF is not covered by most people's insurance. So we'd already spent a good bit of money on all that. And I was like, I cannot even believe that this is happening. So our consultant was like, okay, we're not going to give up, right? And I was like, okay, let's let's keep going. We'll figure we'll figure out how we're going to make all this work. Because I mean, it was it was a large chunk of money that mm-hmm. we had invested with that. And at no point, the lawyer is like, "I'll help you find someone new. I'll cut you a break." It was just done. It was just done. It's just done. And there's nothing you can do about it. No, I'll, I'll I'm going to come back to okay. him though. Okay. Okay. He's going to enter my life again. Okay. All right. Okay. And at a point. Okay. Um, so then the consultant 
on her own has a birth mother that has come to her specifically. Is this in Florida still? Still in Florida. Okay. Florida has easier laws with Mm -hmm. adoption. Um, In what sense? Less wait time for the mothers to sign because you have to make sure the mothers aren't on any, like if they had an epidural. Okay. Not on drugs, like mind altering. Yep. Okay. Anything's mind altering before they sign. Your wait time, um, it's called ICPC when you wait for like basically the attorneys all to talk to the states, all, you know, all the judges Mm -hmm. to say, okay, everything's clear. You can leave. Their, their laws are just easier. Okay. I, don't, I don't know why that. There's certain states, I think Texas, um, Florida, and then maybe Arizona or Utah, somewhere like that. Okay. Just seems to be easier states to yeah. adopt in. So she's like, well, I've got this birth mother. And she tells us she's 14 or 15 weeks. So sorry, how long after? Three weeks this? to a month. Not okay, long. Okay, quick. So I we're mean, still it was in quick. 2018. Oh yeah, we're still yeah. in 2018. And she says she's... She told she was 13 or 14, somewhere around, along those lines, pregnant, the, the, the birth mother. Okay. She said, I'm pretty sure this is going to happen. Um, she doesn't have the means to keep the child. Mm-hmm. Um, she's in and out of jail. Um, hindsight, you should never match with the birth mother that early. You should wait till towards the end because that was a very, very long pregnancy because she was not, she wasn't that far along when she told the consultant. She How was more like, was she? She, I bet she was nine to 10 weeks. Wow. So... We fly down and we meet her and things seem great. I plan another trip to come back when she's going to have another doctor's appointment. And she has picked you though. She's committed yeah. to picking you. She's committed to us. We, and at this point now we hire an attorney mm. because you need Not to make same. sure. No, a different, different attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, we hired a woman attorney um, out of Gainesville. And so she controls how much money because you help the birth mother with living expenses. Do you have to help the birth mother or you choose to help the birth mother? You have to help the birth mother. Um, Now, some birth mothers may say, I live with my parents, so all I'm going to need help with is a cell phone Mm -hmm. and maybe $50 in food a month. That's, it just depends on the, this, every, every single, there's never going to be two situations the same. Okay. So this, she wanted rent, she wanted food, she wanted cell phone, um, didn't have a car, would need help um, getting to and from doctor's appointments and all things we were willing, but every expense goes through the attorney. It does not come through you. So you give the attorney a retainer Mm -hmm. and she, some of the retaining is for her legal expenses, but some is for her to say, okay, she needs a cell phone. So you feel like she's approving the expenses, your attorney. The attorney is approving, has Mm -hmm. to approve and has to call you. If it's a Saturday at nine o'clock at night and somebody's hungry or somebody got kicked out of their house and needs a hotel room, she's going to call you and say, okay, found this hotel room and we're going to approve this. Are you okay with that? And, and these are things that, did these things happen? Yes. During your time with yes. her? Okay. Yes. Um, are, you, are there any like... Was yes, there, there's red there's flags red everywhere. Flags. Yeah. I did not see a single one of them. Yeah. I can promise you, I would have talked, I would have talked you out of telling me that was yeah. a red flag. Did Matt been, ever at the wonder? End, okay. At the end. Because it just seemed like it was too much. Everything was too much. Everything was too much. Are you having contact with the birth mother? Yes. She would text me sometimes. She'd be really nice. Sometimes she'd yell at me like, um, you're not, they're not giving me my money fast enough. Like, where's my rent check? Mm. But I'd be like, but that's not, I, I can't give you that. Like that has to go through the attorney. It's illegal. If I give you money, I guess that shows some kind of coercion. I don't, okay. be, I oh. cannot give her anything. Gotcha. I cannot give her any kind but of money. But the attorney is not saying this is she did. wrong. At the end, she's like, okay, hang on. Like, some of this is not like, we're not going. Uh, she would tell her no. Like, there'd be times she'd be like, mm. you can go to the homeless shelter. Like, we're not providing. Like, we've already paid. We just paid your rent on the first, and it's the fourth. We can't pay for a hotel room right now. Right. But she would make the decision. Um, and sometimes she'd say, I mean, you have to decide. You need to decide, Melissa. Is it worth it to you? Mm-hmm. Is this what you want? Well, yes, you're desperate. You want. Yeah. You've gone. You've seen that the baby's a girl. Like, you know. Like You'd gone to, like, the ultrasound? We, would, we went to, like, not at the actual doctor. We went to one of those other yeah, the, places yeah. that mm-hmm. you go. But, like, there were red flags. Like, the first time I flew down, she told me there was an ultrasound, and I got there. She's like, oh, I'm not having an ultrasound today. I'm like, well, but you told me there was an— I, I wouldn't flew have, here, yeah. I wouldn't have flown right. just for them right. to say, okay, yeah. see you in four weeks. Like, you know— How old was she? 20s. Yeah. And she had two other kids. But she wasn't 14 either. She wasn't 14, but I will say she was 14 when she had her first child. Okay. So she didn't want to parent anymore. She had no, mm-hmm. she didn't want any more children. She had the two she wanted. Mm-hmm. She didn't. And when it was another girl, she said, I definitely don't want another, like, I definitely don't want another girl. Yeah. But 
red flags everywhere. But again, but you're just so desperate, so desperate. For and a people baby. didn't talk about it. Like yeah. there wasn't podcasts on every. Like there wasn't mm. there wasn't stuff to listen to. Now I did listen to while I was trying to get pregnant. There's a podcast called Sarah's Laughter, and it did help me and listen to other people, and it would help me ask doctors about questions. About adoption, but, but this is podcasts were like I mean barely right. even a thing yeah. at this time, other than like Joe Rogan. I mean. Yeah. This was a new thing, and I don't even think she does that many episodes anymore. And I don't listen now because it just makes me. I would love to support them, but it it's makes a, me sad. It's on adoption. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, well, I'm sorry, infertility. Oh, sorry, sorry. Infertility. Sarah's laughter's infertility. Okay. But it does. But she, I'm sorry, she does everybody. She interviews people that yeah. finally give up and go the adoption mm. route. So you hear some of everything okay. on hers, but I can't listen to it now. It just makes yeah, me so it makes sad. You sad. But I never listened to an adoption podcast. Right. What I would. So have you didn't done. know if this is normal, if this is not normal. Well, I mean, the attorney was like, mm, "This is not this." Were like, and especially by the end, she had screamed at every employee that they had, mm-hmm. like the paralegals. Like, I mean, it got so bad. So she goes in. So she, they had told us originally she was due end of October, and she didn't have the baby till beginning of December. So I mean, it was a big. She was definitely lying from the beginning. Right. Um, she goes into labor. She's like yelling. I mean, aren't you coming? Aren't you coming? And I'm like, okay, well, let us pack the car. Like, we've got to get everything, and we get. Did down you have toward. a nursery done? You know, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I was t- no. I, my room was clean and ready to go, mm-hmm. but I didn't have a crib. Okay. I didn't have any of that stuff. There was a few baby items in there, but it was things like friends had given us. Right. But it was nothing like I had not done a nursery. Yeah. I had read you don't want to do it because every time you walk past the door, it's just a constant reminder mm-hmm. that it's empty. Yeah. So I had that's the one piece of advice that I yeah. did listen to just was don't, don't do, do a nursery. Okay. So we get there and she just loses her mind and her mother shows she's up. She's in labor? She's had the baby she's by the time the we get there because it's we had to drive down yeah. there and it took a while to get down there. And basically within four hours of us arriving, we got the call. She's not placing. Do you not go to the hospital? You don't go to the hospital? Not until they let you. You have to be told by your attorney that, it okay, it's time. You can go in there. Um, and at this point, I had I had talked to her the morning of the birth. Like, she was like, you're coming, right? I was like, yes, we're just let us, we're getting in the car. We're yeah. packing the car. Like, we'll be there shortly. And it wasn't, I mean, a few hours after we got there that they so were So like, you're just waiting at the hotel room, thinking mm-hmm. you're getting a call to go to the hospital. Yes. To meet. We're ready. We have a car seat. Your baby. We have a car seat. We have clothes. Like, we are mm-hmm. ready. We don't have a nursery ready, but, you know, we have mm-hmm. the car seat, the pack and play. Like, we're ready to go. And... It was a no. And what did she, what, what's the, I mean, I can't even imagine to the attorney making that call, but did she have Um, a reason? Well, let me revise. That came through as a text message. From the attorney? Yes. Not even our consultant, like our consultant didn't even text us. It was from the attorney to let us know. Yeah. It was bad. The whole situation was bad, but I think she had, she had worn everyone down. Like it just was. She was done. The attorney, I think too. And she just said she's not played. That was the text message? Yes. And we did not hear from our consultant again. At that point. Um, so what, when you get that message, I mean, does it sink in right away? Are you like, this is a mistake? If only yes. I could just talk to her. I know. I should just go. I mean, what are you? We did spend the night in the town. Um, we were like, okay, let's give it 24 hours in case she changes her mind. Because mm-hmm. she is kind of erratic. So yeah. we were like, let's give it 24 hours. And we didn't hear from her. So he, Matt and I packed up and we actually went to the beach for a few days, just us, so that we could mm-hmm. just, because we said we can't imagine coming home because yeah. people kind of knew at this point. I mean, yeah. this match had gone on a long, long time. And um, she texted me and went as far to say that she named the baby Melissa. <gasps> and at that point- I, I forgot about that. And I at that point is when I, blo- I blocked her I and I turned my phone off. Out of my memory. Well, because you know she didn't. She was just reaching for straws. And at that point, Matt and I had made the decision, even if she did change her mind, we weren't the, we were not. So what, when she first texted you, the birth mother, what did she say? I'm so sorry. This she is said, happening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I changed my mind, but I want you to know I named her Melissa. And I just, I just remember looking at Matt going, oh, oh, for the love. And I was like, I'm, I was like, I'm let anyone know oh. my phone is off for the next week. I will not right. turn this power button on. And I've blocked her number because I was like, this is, this is. This is a whole no, another yeah. level. But I had told Matt, I said, even if she changed her mind, because birth mothers do change their mind. They okay. just have a little, sometimes mm-hmm. they're, and then they, they're like, okay, hang on. I know that what I'm choosing is a better life for my right. child. Like there's a reason that I can't. This isn't a good Once situation. Once they get to that window of time, whatever it is per state, and they sign the paper, mm-hmm. is there any window of time after that for them to change their mind? Yes. There still is. Every state is different. So like in Florida, 
I think it's two weeks. It's short. Okay. Because we adopted out of Pennsylvania and it was 30 days. Now, they'd have to prove that like you coerce them. Like okay, it would take a lot. Okay, it's not just I, oops, changed my mind. Right. There's a, there's like a reason. Once you sign, okay. you, but like okay. there, but Pennsylvania's 30 days. So what, are we short. into 2019 now then? Oh, no, you said December. She had the baby. Yes. 2018. So December, we were like, okay. We definitely can't go the route we were going. We're going to have to sign with an agency. So we started But you have not lost hope at this point. I mean, there's a lot of people who, you have a year of two adoptions. Christmas was awful that year. Um, Yeah. That was one of our worst holidays. Mm. Um, Because again, it was a lot of money lost. Not as much as the first time because that other attorney required quite a bit up front. Do you have any repercussions as an adoptive couple if you give a birth mother money along the way legitimately through the attorney and, and do what you're supposed to do if they change their mind. No, you get nothing back. No, you can, sometimes you can write some of the stuff off. Um, once you have a, uh, what do you, what is the, um, once you have an adoption that's actually truly gone through and that's been legal, like, okay, you can write some stuff off, but it's not. I mean, it's mm. taxes. It's not, you're not, they're not getting like all the pizzas we sent, all the broken cell phones. No, that's all of the rent paid for all those months from the beginning of pregnancy to yeah. the end. It's just gone. Absolutely gone. Wow. So, so now if go- you're with an agency though, that that is, that is the difference. So when you're with an agency, they may give you $10,000 in credit back. Okay, yeah. But they're not going to write you you're a not check getting- back. Right. Um, but that would just go towards your next adoption okay. for this because we went privately with an attorney this way. It was just, it is what it is. Now this one, we didn't lose as much. We lost more time than anything. Yeah. So like, here's almost, I mean. Invested. Tons and the stress and the the worry and the, I mean, you literally, every time your phone would ring, you'd go, oh gosh, like, mm. what's she going to say? Like, is she changing? Or, you know, you're just, you're constantly yeah. worried. Yeah. But so she kept the baby. As far as we know, we don't yeah. know if she ended up adopting it out to someone else. We have no idea that. That. Because you left your consultant, you left that yes. attorney. Because there was no, yeah, there was no sign like anything right. like major long commitments like you would be with a commitment with it with an agency. So then we were like, all right, we're going to sign with a big agency, one that we know if that failed adoption happens and it's twenty two thousand dollars, you're going to get half that money towards the next adoption. Okay. You're not going to get cash back in your hand. Is that standard for agencies or is every it just agency per... has a different? Okay. Some agencies don't give any. Okay. Um, but we were started looking into American adoptions because we knew that they had a. I probably shouldn't say. Agency name. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, because I, w- I really want people, I think you and I were talking about that before, like, and even you just saying, like, back when I was going through all this, I didn't know where to look. I didn't, I didn't know, know where to begin. I didn't know who to Google. I didn't know. I mean, this is a this is your life you're talking about. So um, when you say in the last, like, maybe eight to 10 years, adoption's really been more beautiful. Like, it's been more, it's celebrated. It, to, it is. It used yeah. to be such a stigma. Like, oh, yeah. you're adopted. Like your, your parents didn't want you. No, your parents probably did want you, but yeah. they wanted you to have a better life. A better life. Yeah. They they knew they couldn't provide for you. I mean, imagine like a 16 year old having to make that decision. No. That's such a mature decision, but no, know, knowing that at 16, you're still a baby. Yeah. Like you're not ready mm-hmm. to do it. And especially if you don't have the family to help the you, to back you up. Your parents, I mean, yeah. I mean, and, or even if it's just your friends to support you, I mean, yeah, it, it's such a big decision. So we started looking at an agency and out of nowhere, we somehow got connected with an attorney in California. I don't even know how we found this guy. And he ends up with another situation for us. Really, He's like, okay, I've got one for you. She and her husband are estranged. Um, she's pregnant. It's another man's baby. And he goes, well, the only hiccup is she lives with her aunt and her aunt is not supportive of this. Well, you really want the families to be supportive. Of them Adopted. Giving the baby out. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. She's not she's not supportive. So that was really our only red flag. We went and met her. In she California? Was, um, the attorney was in California. She oh. was in Georgia. Right. So you can be an attorney in a far okay. unless I hit yeah. this, yeah. in a far different state. Yeah. Um, and still represent other people. Like I bet um they never met, other than like a FaceTime call. Wow. They would have never met. Like how she found him, I don't yeah. even know. But we meet her because she's just in Georgia, so that's not far for us. Um See a few red flags, but nothing major. She has two other kids um, with her husband. She believes this baby is the other man's. She does nothing. She's not begging for cell phone money. Like, she's really not asking a lot. And again, this attorney, he's like, I I will give you this amount back if it doesn't go through. Mm-hmm. But I feel confident it will. But she is putting the baby up for adoption yes. because she believes it's the father is the man she 
had the affair with. Yes. And she has two children with her husband. Yes. Okay. Um, and he knows she's pregnant. Um, the she's, husband? Yes. And mm-hmm. she's told him, I, it's not yours. It's not your baby. No, nope. I'm giving the baby up for adoption. Yep. And there, other than, the, other than who, she live, who she's living with not being supportive, only red flag we ever had. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was not. It was it was really easy and it was short. Like she was very far along. She was going to have the baby not long. So she has the baby end of May. I'm in the room with her. And I see her look at her cousin. Have you had contact with her? A few texts, not a lot. I decided with this one, I was just going to do, be as supportive as possible, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't going to like involve myself too, too much. But like, how did your Are you feeling as emotionally invested? Is it getting, are you doing it less and less each time? Less and less each time. And so she says, I want you to be at the hospital, but I want you in the delivery room. I'm like, great. I don't know if I want to see that anyway. Right, yeah. Like, I'm not really sure. <laughs> and this hospital's real weird. So, like, you're literally birthing in, like, in the suite outside. Like, it, like you can hear what's happening in the right. room. Like, it's where you wait. It's very, right. very strange. So, this is the Tuesday after Memorial Day. And she's induced. And she, very last minute, her cousin opens the door. Says, she wants you to be in here when the baby's born. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So, I walk in there. and then, But as soon as the baby comes out, I see her look to her cousin and say, it's the husband's. I, obviously, there was something, Some somehow she knew. That it was not the man. It was not the man she had, had the affair th- with. And so um, she had me stay with her with the baby that night. Matt had a hotel room. because did she Matt, say, like, other than it's the husband's baby? She didn't say it to me. I heard it. Okay. She never said but anything But she never said anything to you about anything? No. Uh, the next morning, I stayed with her in the room all night long. Um, she never breastfed. She did insist on naming the baby, which I did know was a red flag, but it also... Mm-hmm. Are you she, holding the baby at this point? Yes. Okay. I held the baby all the way to the room. Matt walked with me. Like, we got her settled in the room. He went mm-hmm. and got everybody food. And then, like, at 10 o'clock when visiting hours are over, he went to the hotel and stayed. And you stayed with her all in, night. The, in the mm-hmm. hospital room? Um, and the next morning, they brought the papers in to sign. I thought, okay, she's naming the baby. I'm, I'm, I'm a little freaked out, but I was like, okay... Mm-hmm. Don't be too freaked out. Don't don't scare yourself too much. This is some some birth mothers want to name the baby, and mm-hmm. some actually ask you to keep the name of the baby. Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, but it was a real family name, and I went, okay. Well, then the social worker asked us to step out so she could talk to her before, because she'll she'll be getting ready to sign forms the next day. She's when and it was a social it was our social worker that we hired to uh-huh. handle all the mediation since the attorneys in California. So. We were paying her to come and manage everything. And she said, well, when you step out, I get a text from her that says, can you come back? And I knew then. I thought, Mm. and our stuff was sitting in the waiting room, all of our stuff that was in the room with her. And she said, she, and and then two seconds later, you see her whole family walk into the hospital. Like, I mean, like her parents drove from Texas, like when they found out. And she said, she's going to keep the baby. And I said, okay. And Matt and I got in the car and we drove home. When you, though, I mean, you... But that's her right, though. Like, yes. I, I understood. I wasn't yeah. mad at her. I was right. disappointed for myself. Yes. Like, I would never want a birth mother to sign if they weren't... If they if weren't that, ready. And if they didn't want to do that, if that's when not what you want to do. When you're driving home from that, though, are you talking to each other? No. Are you quiet? Are you crying? Are you... Crying. You're just crying. Just crying. Just sad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can still feel the disappointed. pain. Disappointed. I can still... I can feel... The pain from all three of them still today, yeah. even yeah. though there is a happy. Yes, you have a happy ending. Alert, there yeah. is a happy, you have ending. a happy ending. So that was Wednesday, um, Thursday. So we had to drive home. So we didn't get home till later Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, an empty car seat. Like yeah. you know, all the things. Yeah. So we were sitting on the couch on Thursday, and we said, "Okay." God, God has told you more than once. This mm-hmm. is not, mm-hmm. parenting is not, we're going to be the cool aunt and uncle. And, you know, yeah. I have a really close relationship with my sister and my sister's kids. And I mean, they're with us all the time, mm-hmm. even though they don't even live that close. But I mean, a week at Christmas, a week in the summer. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, we're going to be the cool. And we literally had said that to each other. We'd been to Five Points Pizza and Jenny's Ice Cream that day, like as a treat to ourselves. Right. And I don't even know if we really ate. We were just so, that one really got us because it was like, okay, we're finally done. Mm-hmm. There's no more. Did Absolutely. you truly feel that way yes. or was it you truly did? And that exact day, within an hour, we got a text from the attorney and it said, would you consider twins with consents already signed? And I remember I just threw yeah. my phone across the room. I said, <laughs> "You ha- this has to be, yeah. this has to be a joke. Yeah. This cannot be a true story. Yeah. But the only reason we answered was because it said consent signed, meaning... She's signed the papers. She signed the papers. So she's truly going 
she's she's planning on going. So this through is with how this. many days after you've been back from the next day. The next the, day. Yeah, it was the next okay. day. Yeah. So we interviewed that night with one of the owners of the agency because this was with an agency this time. So we also knew it's it's going to be a little more clear cut. Like mm-hmm. it's going to be a little more expensive, but it's going to be a little more clear cut. And we knew that they were four weeks old um, and that they had spent most of their time in the ICU, but they were out of the hospital and they were living with the owner of the agency doing what's called respite care. What's that? It's, it's basically where they're paid to keep the baby until they find a home. So the birth mother actually didn't want to pick the family. She trusted the agency and said, wow. I'm going to let... I didn't let. know that was a thing because I thought they just would have gone into foster care. They can. They can. But um, she had picked the agency, so they didn't have to go to foster care oh, okay. until they were adopted. She signed with an agency. Gotcha. Um, meaning, I'm sure there was living expenses. I mean, I'm sure I could look at my contract. Right. I don't... Right. Trust me, at this point, we didn't even look you at contracts. Even, we just, just like signed say, things yeah, yeah. at this point. We were like, we're not... I mean, I mean, if it doesn't work out, we've... Yeah. we've we don't care. We were just going to sign. But yeah. we interviewed on that night and she said, okay, well, I'll get back with you. Like with over the other. phone you're interviewing? Yeah. Okay. So we talked to her on the phone. She was yeah. really sick and her dogs were barking in the background. She's okay. like, I'm really sorry, but she's like, okay, the twins, they're living with the other owner of the agency right now, what's called respite care. And they're a month old at this point. They're a month old. They had just been out of the hospital just a couple of days. So they send us a picture. So we have to do all these forms, filling out, you know, interviewing. And she says, we're going to make our decision in the next few days, but you're not the only family. Mm. And you're like, okay, but that's okay. Yeah. There was another thing that said, you have to be willing to write the check. It can't be you. Oh, I've got to fundraise for a little bit. You need to have the money. Well, Matt and I looked at each other like, oh no, that's going to be the hard part. Cause I mean, adoptions anywhere. I mean, you can find an adoption 15,000, but most of them are going to be with an agency are going to be over 30 to 50. Wow. 50 is a very common number okay. for for one baby. Okay. So we were like, oh gosh, how much is this going to be? Well, it wasn't that much more okay. over the... I don't know if you want to tell people the price. Because no, that's fine. I think people are very curious. You can decide I had, to edit I that really had, No, I really had no idea how much money so, it would cost. And I think that's a legitimate concern for people is they don't know what they're spending. You do most times when you're with an agency because they're pretty upfront from okay. the beginning. Um, But... Point blank, it was sixty thousand. Yeah. Um, and but we had just lost all this. Matt's like, oh goodness gracious, what are we going to do? Well, wow. someone had told us years ago, a financial person had said, um, when you have a lot of equity in your home, always leave a HELOC open mm. because it's a lower interest. And just, if there's ever a crisis it's or available. an emergency, yeah. there's there's a way to write a check. So Matt was like, well, I mean, it's sitting at zero balance. He's like, I'm not against it. And at this point, I thought he would be against it because yeah. like we'd been through enough. Yeah. But he was like. I mean, and he was like, let's just interview. And I'm like, okay. So we fill out all the, the money forms. was only if you got approved for the babies. Yeah. There was no chance you were losing the money. We'd have to give them anything okay. until they picked us. Nothing. Okay. Not That's a, right. Okay. We weren't technically signing with them. Okay. This was just a baby that gotcha. they had. They are yeah. twins that they had. And I guess twins are harder to place. Mm. Um, I mean, there's two of them. You're Do you even know, one. you might not know this, but what the money is going towards. Well, a lot's going towards agency. There's the medical cost. bills. A lot okay. of times the state will cover medical bills, mm-hmm. but it's also living expenses, counseling. Yeah. Um, lots, especially with big agencies, counseling is a huge thing. They For want, the birth mothers? They want the birth mothers okay. counseled during pregnancy, after pregnancy. Okay. Um, there's also, I mean, for years and years, for me with this agency, I sent updates. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. But mind you, we interview we get picked. We don't tell a soul. I know you didn't tell a we soul. We literally did not tell. I we know. didn't tell our parents. Well, you didn't even tell your parents. We told not a soul. The person that was not watching. your sister? No. Wow. We did not tell my sister. Because you just were so used to being disappointed. And disappointing other. Like, I felt yeah. like everybody had pity on us. I felt like right. everybody felt so sorry for us. Mm-hmm. And again, until those papers were signed, like by us included, I was like, I don't want to. But we but we were picked. Um, <clears throat> we, we fly up. To Pennsylvania, we literally, I mean, even the person keeping our dog said, wait, why is your car in the garage if you're just, if Matt just took you away for a night or two? Oh, you said you just, Matt took you away. Yeah. Because at this point we knew once we told someone else, we could get a dog sitter, like a permanent yes. dog sitter, but we just asked a neighbor out of the blue uh-huh. to keep the dog for another Tybo girl, actually, yep. that lived around the corner. And um, so we get up there and we meet them and they're like, okay, wait. Is this like, you said Wednesday, are we now on Thursday? It was a full week from being picked. Oh, it was a full week. Okay. From being, from all the interviews, yeah. being picked and getting a plane ticket. So they did pick no, you? Wednesday to Friday, sorry, because we flew Friday. So when did you find out you got picked after the interview? 
Monday or Tuesday. Okay. I was, it was Monday because I was in Chattanooga because I was doing stuff with my nieces. I actually okay. was interviewing at the pool. I was like, y'all just play over there. Don't worry <laughs> about what I'm on the phone call doing. And wow. so no, to, the Monday we interviewed on the phone. Tuesday, they called us to say we were picked because I was driving home Tuesday. And we flew Friday because we had, we had that party Thursday. Do you still have reservations at this point? You've been picked. You've, you've paid. You know she signed the paperwork. Are you flying there still thinking... Well, we knew that there was still, the waiting period was still there. Okay. So we knew we had till the 24th of June. So how many weeks was that after? So that was June 4th or 5th that we met them. So not long. It wasn't a long, like. A couple weeks. Yeah, because she had signed the paperwork. Do you have to wait there or you can bring the babies home? No, you can bring the babies home. Now, some people choose not, some people actually choose not to actually even come in contact with the baby till the Mm. waiting period's over. That's where respite care comes in. Yes. Okay. You can pay people to, because you don't want to. So you could have left them there. Yeah, we just, you care. just pay. You yeah. just pay for care, but that was But wasn't, you chose, yeah. we're doing it. Because we knew, I mean, they said, I mean, it would literally have to be that she would have to say, like, we coerced her into signing okay, these Okay, it's forms. not that she just changed her mind. Right. She would have to no. prove you did something wrong, yes. that you weren't yes. worthy and, of this. And okay. she didn't pick us, so, right. and this is a closed adoption. It's a closed adoption. So we are home, and very, we had told some of y'all at this point, but we were yeah. like, we're not really telling the world, so don't say anything until June mm-hmm. 25th. Like, June 25th, we can talk about it. We... <laughs> And this is where the first attorney in Florida comes back. Mm. The girl's pregnant again and wants to be sure Matt and I get the baby. The first girl. The first girl. He reaches out to you after says, you've just brought home the twins, but you're still waiting. We're waiting. But and, we said no. I mean, we knew. Yeah. We just knew. There was just something different that right. we just knew. I didn't walk around on eggshells all those days. Yeah. Um, no, we didn't go anywhere. They were preemie too, so we didn't want to go anywhere right. with germs and everything. Um, but yeah, he, he reached back out and he said, well, I'm glad that your story had a happy ending after all of that. Mm. But she wasn't even going to interview other mothers. She was like, this will be her baby. Wow. Mm-hmm. Was there any part of you that ever thought, okay, I'll take her too. No. I'll take this baby. No. No, there was two. I was already. already So you're home with twins. Mm -hmm. And you're just, are you, in those, in the waiting part, are you full on bonding or are you still kind of doing it from arm's length? No. You are in. I'm in. You're in. I'm in. I've dreamed of this my whole life. I. Does it even seem real? Like, are you and Matt staring at each other, like waiting for someone to knock at the door and take them out? Yes. Yeah. We still, to this day. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I remember our first, so with adopting, you have a caseworker come in or a social worker come in mm-hmm. and they check on you to make sure, cause they have, you know, they come in the beginning to make sure your house is safe and yeah. all that. And she even came, we still didn't have cribs for them. They were still sleeping in pack and place. She's like, I don't care. They have a safe place to sleep. Yeah. Like, I don't even care. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but like, we just didn't get to that. Like, I'm sorry, but we have twins. <laughs> yeah. And it, well, when we just hadn't gotten to the crib part. Yeah. Yet. I think because I think she came maybe a week after we got home. Like it wasn't long, right? And they're so little; they're sleeping by our yes. beds at this point. Yeah. You know, but I remember. Uh, okay, so then on number three, I guess when you went to Georgia, yeah, you had been at our lake house, yes, and you left the lake house to go to Georgia, yes, and we all knew you were going, yes. for the birth, yes, and then I remember when it didn't happen, mm-hmm. and. We were all like on a group text, like a couple's group text. I think I even sent pictures of yeah, Matt you, and I walking down the yeah, hallway. You did, yeah. But it was Matt then. We knew you would come home. You were sad. It had not worked out. And all of us at the same time get a text on the group text from your husband. And it's a photo of you holding two <laughs> Little babies. Yeah. And he said something like, whatever he said, it didn't sound like they were ours. No, like it was, it it was very much like no one knew what to say. Like no one knew <laughs> how to respond. Cause it wasn't like, hey guys, great news. Like I, I don't, I should have looked back at what the text was. I don't remember, but it wasn't. Cause they were so close together. It didn't make any sense. It wasn't clear because five days prior, six, yeah. seven days prior, we just thought that this had happened to you. And I remember, I think someone said like, who's that? No, I think everyone said, who's, who's who are this? My, who's, <laughs> my sister even said, she goes, oh, congrats to whoever got twins. I said, yeah. they're ours. Like, yeah. wait, wait, what do you mean? And everyone's like, wait, what? Because it was so, that's why we didn't tell anybody until right. it happened. Because yeah. it needed to be real. It needed to be yes. for sure. It yeah. needed to be, there was little to no chance that this wasn't yes. happening. Yeah. So when the time came, when the two weeks or the time passed, 
Are you like taking a deep breath? We opened a bottle of champagne at midnight. You did. Or it was 11 our time. Yeah. Because it's midnight there. Yeah. Because it was in Pennsylvania. Um, We did. We opened a bottle of champagne um, and we celebrated. And you did. You took a deep breath. You said, okay. But then you start the next process, which was really making it legal, getting them your last name. Because that's another six months. Okay. That's another six months. And that's a different attorney. Like you hire an attorney to do that part. Mm. So. But even during that time, there's no risk that this is not working out. At this point, it's just legalities. We had never gotten a message, nothing. Yeah. So, wow. and it was closed, so she wasn't asking questions. So what's um, the difference between closed and open? Because I feel like people hear that a lot and don't maybe so, know what that is. I'll be honest, this is something I think people should um, know how Matt and I turned our tune so much. So when we started it, we thought we definitely want closed, meaning there's no contact. Mm. They can't contact the children. They can't, they, they know nothing. Like, mm. you can't contact me, I'm not contacting you. Um, as we have opened our hearts to adoption. We think, well, how cruel is, like, Mm. I say cruel. I understand there are situations where children should not be privy, but if they ever could, like, Mm -hmm. I would want Emma and Ellie to know where they came from. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love, and we've told our agency, anytime she wants to open it, as long as she's in a healthy spot, Mm -hmm. we're good with that. Because wouldn't you rather be the one to help guide a healthy relationship? Has the mother chosen the closed? The mother chose the closed. The mother chose the closed. So when you're filing your forms, like with an agency and things, right. you can tell them, I want an open or a closed. Mm. Um, the birth mother can do drugs or she can't do drugs. Mm. Um, the birth mother can drink alcohol during pregnancy or not. Our thing was we would take um, any baby, mm-hmm. any color, race, ethnicity. Mm-hmm. We didn't care. We just didn't want the birth mother to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, that seems to be a real big problem okay. um, with babies is actually drugs aren't as bad on you, which is crazy to think. Is that alcohol. We, Alcohol is really bad. Mm. Um, that was our only stipulation. Um, and originally we said closed. And I said, let's just always say either. And we'll just, we can make a decision at that yeah. point if we don't like though the way that the open is going to be. But I can, I've can i seen so many beautiful open adoptions now, mm. especially if any of your followers want to follow um, Brave Love yeah. on Instagram. Okay. I, I literally cry all the time seeing these birth mothers talk about their stories. And mm. I mean, there's some girls in college, like I was 22. Yeah. I wanted to have a career and I just knew. Mm. And I knew when I placed, you know, baby Lily with Marie and I saw her, I saw Marie light up with joy. Like, I mean, I get the goosebumps just mm. thinking like, there are some of the most beautiful open adoptions. And maybe they see the child once every five years. Yeah. Or maybe they talk by email or maybe it's once a month. I yeah. mean, it. Every adoption is, I'm telling you, every adoption is so, so different. different. There's no two adoptions alike. But you don't have any contact with the birth mother. I don't. I do um, four updates a year, which oh, okay. um, most updates are two to three pictures and a letter. I was do, that a you thing or that was in the contract? Was is that a, so in the contract, uh, the first two years is four times and then it goes down to one time a year, I believe. Is that picked by the birth mother, the agency, you? The agency, it's just their it, guidelines. Okay. I think it's just a strict guideline that okay. they have. Um, I have always stuck to four updates a year mm-hmm. and I do a photo book, like a small photo book mm-hmm. and I do mostly serious pictures and usually the last picture, I had a picture of all of us. So I try not to make it about us being their parents, I try to make the book about how they're thriving mm. and growing in life. So usually my last picture will be of all of us. Because they, they, most of the time, they yeah. still want to see... The family. The family. That they've placed them into. But I also don't want to hurt her and say, I don't want to rub in anything because we don't. I don't mm. know how she feels. I, she could think that this is the most beautiful thing ever. I don't know because yeah. we don't know You her. don't know that. I don't know her. We know... Matt knows all names. I know first names. Mm. It's not... I don't need to know anything yeah. else. Um we talk to our girls about it. Do I think they understand? Absolutely not. Yeah. No. I mean, just this week when I was making, I was actually doing the update from their birthday mm-hmm. a month late, but I'm yeah. like, it's yeah. life. You know, it's just, <laughs> and Emma said, no, why are we doing that again? And I said, well, this is for your birth mother. And like, we don't ever so use you, her name. You, but you do use the name, like I the word the birth, birth mother, okay. birth father. Yeah. I said, you know, mommy always sends this to them and I, I show her and like, and she likes recapping what they've done over right. the last few months. So it's fun for her. Ellie's all back, you know, coloring on the wall right. somewhere. Like she's just yeah. like, yeah. And then she'll even go, but I I thought I grew in your tummy. I'm like, no, remember you grew in my heart. And then, and right now they're like, no, I want to grow in your tummy. And I'm mm. like, well, we'll talk about it. We read adoption books. Okay. Um, I think in the next year we'll really grasp it. But yeah. right now I just feel like we should still talk about it. Yeah. Um, we didn't make a big deal about Birth Mother's Day this year. Um, we, we did last year and they just didn't get it. And this year we didn't make as big, we talked about it, but it wasn't, mm. you know. What's but, Birth Mother's Day? So it's the day before Birth Mother's, I mean, Mother's Day, sorry. Oh, so it's I didn't the Saturday even know before. that. Mm-hmm. So like we've sent, we sent her something the first two years, just a little small something. And do you have any 
like feedback from the agency, if she likes it, got it. No, nope, I've asked, loves the I've pictures. said, let me know if, if I'm lacking. Okay. I've even put in her letter to, um, I write it to her, both yeah. the birth mother and father. I never write it, just, just one, I write it to both. Okay. And I've even put, if there's something you're lacking from me, please, please let yeah. them know. And I'm happy to, you know, like if you want, more updates or if right. you want, I mean, I, I didn't give her an example. I said, if, yeah. if I'm lacking something and sending you, please yes. let me know. So we and, do, I will say we don't send like where we live. Um, right. Like if I took a picture the other day at recital and I was like, oh, the name of the school's in the background. We should probably not put that picture in there. Right. Because she's choosing clothes. So I'm not going to. But you don't even know if she knows your identity. So she does not know your identity. Is I that would right? assume that she would know our first and last name, but I don't know. Okay. Um, I know she was texting with the agency the day that we met the girls. So when we met the girls, mm. we didn't actually take custody of them till the next day. So Matt and I actually went home without anybody that night. Okay. But it gave us time to like just enjoy it one last night. Like yeah. we just sat in the hotel room and just thought, oh my gosh, by 12 o'clock tomorrow, we're we're going to have, there's gonna be two <laughs> we babies are in this of room. Newborn twins. Like they're they're going to be and they were tiny, you know, and they yeah. were they were preemie. So they were teeny, teeny, tiny. tiny. And so Emma and Ellie. Yes. And they're how old now? They're four. They turn four in May. Four. And, and they're, they're thriving. Like they, yeah. no sign of preemies whatsoever. Like we worried for so long that they, you know, because you never know with a preemie. Yeah. Um, Emma was quite a bit bigger than Ellie. They are pretty much like ounce to ounce, inch yeah. to inch, the same height, everything. Um, two totally different kids. They are fraternal. Yeah. Everybody thinks they're identical, but they're yeah, not. Yeah, I would have thought, I, I actually don't think I knew they weren't identical. They're not identical. They're fraternal. And different as night and day. Yeah. I mean, like so, so different. Um, they're wonderful. And then the icing on the cake to our yes, story. Tell everybody. Okay. So how long have you been going along with twins? So let me ask you this. Were you done? Like were twins the end of your story from adoption? No. You we still thought you would adopt? actually considered um, getting home study approved to foster and okay. do some kind of respite care of other families that were adopting because okay. we remember those weeks that those babies yeah. are born that, that things can change. Right. Um, we thought, well, maybe we could do that or maybe we we'll just want to foster in general, but let's get the girls to three. Mm -hmm. We said, let's wait till three and then we'll make a decision. But let's not close the door completely. We still have one more guest room. Like we could still, we could help, we could help other adoptive families. Because right. we do know that when Emma and Ellie came home from the hospital for the week that they were with Jessica, so loved. Mm. her children loved those girls so much. Like it was so yeah. pretty. Like she would send us pictures and like our daughter even was at the hotel with us when the day we were leaving. Wow. She's like, I just want to see the twins one more time. Like we just knew. It's just the peace of knowing that. Like how yeah. loved, like this baby's going to foster yeah. care. Not not all of them are going to be loved like mm -hmm. that. You know, and she was there at the hospital with them every day once there was no one else, you know, wow. once the birth mother was gone, you know, so, and they were there three weeks. Oh. So we just always thought that. So we were like, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Like at year three. Yeah. Like year three. That, that'll that be a better. We, we got to get out of this mm -hmm. like baby phase. And on our 20th anniversary, the day before I'd said to Matt, I was like, ah. Oh, the girls are how old? Two and a half. Okay. Two. No, just two. They weren't mm -hmm. two and a half yet. Um, no, they were two and a half. Sorry. Um, no, they were one and a half. What am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, little. They were one and a half. They were little. little. <laughs> I, it's because your head was in like just this fog. It was never what was going to happen. Yeah. was going to happen. I remember telling Matt on Sunday, I said, oh, you know, I have my, I'm, because you have to get your mammogram. Yeah. I was like, I have it in three weeks, but man, my boobs are really hurting. I was like, and you know, and you know, we have a mutual friend who mm -hmm. cancer is very mm -hmm. prevalent in their life. And I thought, what if I'm missing a sign for breast cancer? I'm mm. in my 40s. I mean, it's very possible. Yeah. Because you're how old? Anything. How old were you at this time? I'm 40. You're 40. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I'm like, no, it's 41. And I had just turned 41 in December. And okay. I said, no, I said, well, why don't why don't you call and see if they can get you in? Like this is on Monday. He said, just call and see if they can get you in. And they were like, For we, a mammogram. They said, we have an opening. Mm -hmm. Could you come at 2 30? And I'm like, yes, I can come. It's our 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and Matt's like, That's I'll exactly come. Exactly how you want to spend your right. 20th anniversary, getting like, a mammogram. Get there. And the girl goes, Oh, no, no, no. Because whoever answered the phone at Vanderbilt. Obviously, they don't. They're not. They don't know what sign. Right. They, she said, "No, you've got to go to Hundred Oaks, and that's three weeks for that kind of appointment." Because I was expressing pain, and she said, "Well, is there any chance you're pregnant?" I said, yeah. "I start <laughs> dying." Girl, if I go, you only I knew like, my if story. You only knew. Yeah. I was like, "No, ma'am, there's not." Yeah. And so again, before I left, she's like, "Okay, let's make this appointment, but it's three weeks away." Are you sure there's no possibility? And I was like, "No," because so, you were saying you had. Boob pain, breast pain. Yes. And okay. she said, but you're saying they're both not one. Right. And I said, well, yeah. She was like, 
It's just very rare that you would have pain in both. Mm. And I'm sure someone thinks, how old are you? And you don't. You just, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay. So I was like, okay. On the way home, I said, I'm just going to test Matt. I said, oh my gosh, that is the biggest waste of You $12. told Matt. Okay. Yeah. And the twins were sleeping. He was working from home while I was. Stop. And by the time I got home, he, had, he was taking a shower and I came in and he goes, well, it's not been four minutes. And I said, well, it clearly didn't need four minutes. And he was like, this is not happening. <gasps> And sure enough, I was. Now we had bumps in the road after that, but now we have Everett, who was a year and a half, um, yeah. little but girl. But your pregnancy was fine. I had uh, two subchronic hemorrhages right at the very beginning, so right. I thought I lost her twice. Yeah. Well, I thought I lost. I thought I lost her. I thought, mm-hmm. okay, this is over. So I called back to the doctor. I'm like, no need for another ultrasound appointment because right. at five weeks, Matt and I went, and we, um, you could see that there was something. She goes, but you're so newly along. She's like, you're clearly not very. You're very early pregnant. Yeah. So we didn't see much. They didn't even print a picture. That's how early mm-hmm. I was. She's like, I'm not even going to print you the picture yet. So I call back the next week. I'm like, don't worry about the next ultrasound. Um, I've I've miscarried. And she was like, okay, no problem. They didn't even, because I'd had them before. They yeah, were like, They weren't whatever. like, maybe you should double check. So that was Sunday. Well, Friday it happens again. And I was like, I was like, would you want to go to the emergency room? I go, what am I going to do with the emergency room? Right. If Say maybe I only miscarried part now. I'm yeah. miscarrying the second part. I don't know. I mean, that never happened to yeah. me before, but that's in my mind. I'm like, no, I'll just call him Monday morning. And he was like, okay, well, in the meantime, we all come down with this horrible stomach bug. Right. So Monday I called. They're like, okay, we'll just come in Tuesday. But I had the stomach bug Sunday. Matt gets the stomach bug Tuesday. So I'm going to this appointment by myself. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, Matt, you're puking. You can't go with what me. What do you think you're going to the appointment for? To make sure I didn't need a DNC. Okay. Like I knew I was done. Like right. I mean, there was no part of me that thought I was right. pregnant. And I'm laying there. And she's, Are you at your OB for this OB. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm just seeing the ultrasound tech because that's all oh, you have to see at this. You're okay, just going okay. to see the ultrasound yeah. tech. And she says, well, there's the heartbeat. And I pop up off that table so fast <laughs> and say, excuse me. Oh. And she said, yeah, there's Had a heartbeat. Have you ever had a heartbeat in any of your other pregnancies? Two. Two. Okay. But then immediately. I mean, I mean, okay. I've miscarried very quickly with okay. all of ours. Um, and I like send Matt a text and I'm like, there's a heartbeat. And he's even like, you have to be kidding. And then he feels terrible because he's not there. Because he's not there. He's puking. But I'm home. like, you're puking. Like you're yeah, home from yeah, work. It's sick. fine. Yeah. Like, like I, I, and she was like, okay. She's like, let's get a plan. So I see the doctor like two days later and I end up with a doctor who was amazing. Called Nash for Fertility. Got, talked to the doctors like, okay, what are we going to do to keep her pregnant? She's obviously mm-hmm. has some sort of issue. Got me on the medicines that I needed to be on. And so did they figure out what the issue was? Like why the so, lead? No, like, it happens. Like just happens. Now that I like hear about it, like, cause you know, your phones are listening. I like yeah. other Instagram people I hear I'm talking about. It. I'm like, but even when I told her I bled twice, they didn't tell me I finally I said, did I have a subchronic hemorrhage? And she said, yes, you did. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. And then it just goes away. Yeah. Some people end up with a hematoma. Okay. That stays with you through the pregnancy. Mine just happened to just mm. go. So by 14 weeks, I was back to exercising and I was all then healthy little girl at 39 weeks. And then you had Everett. Everett. And we didn't name her Everett, but yeah. we had kind of picked the name Everett Boy or Girl. Yeah. And I was like, I just love that name. And you were and what, 42 when you had her? 41? Those 42. 42. Because now I'm 43. And the girls were what, just over two then? Yeah, because I had three under three. You had th- <laughs> Yes. Welcome we pray- to motherhood. Yes. We- here's, here's three under three for you. We joke that I'm um, like, we all have asked people to pray a little too hard. Um, yeah. I mean, but we are so happy. And so, I mean, oh, she is the icing on the cake. Yeah. She loves her sisters. They love her. Like you would, you wouldn't know that they weren't. They also look identical they to look one hard. another, which is really Crazy. It's crazy. All three of mine have had like somewhat of curly hair. Now, Everett's, I think, is going to yeah. be the curliest, okay. but Matt had curly hair. Yeah. But they all kind of have a little curly hair, yeah. like pretty tan skin. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's um, now the twins have beautiful, beautiful blue eyes, just like my husband. Mm-hmm. And then the baby has my brown eyes. They're yeah. greenish brown, like they kind of change, but it's, yeah. Now, do you feel done? We feel done. <laughs> the inn is full. Um, not to say whatever closed my door on fostering later right, in helping, life, like if that. I needed to, but right now, I mean, there's just I I don't I don't know how you have four. Like I don't yeah I don't. Well, I had four stretched apart. Yours right, were just yes, like very close together. Well, a and two's tornado. hard. But I mean, right now, like we're in such a good place because they play with each other. Yeah. Like they do. Even the baby just goes and disappears with them sometimes. Yeah. Like I can prep dinner. I mean, yeah. there's days, of course, she wants to be yeah. held the whole time. But I mean. I mean, it's, the thirds kind of parent themselves. Yeah, they just does. kind of figure it out. Yeah, she and you're does. just like, you'll be good. I'm sure. Oh, and I'm yes. sure you'll be fine. The twins have organic and pureed. And <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, you, you never left the bar. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sure, you have. Here's an Oreo for a snack. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, because if she sees the twin have one, yeah. I mean, she has to have one. Yeah. There's no way. And you realize that they will just be fine. Oh, she's gonna. Yeah. When you, if you could, 
sit in front of somebody, speak directly to somebody who's in the throes of just feeling the despair that you felt. Do you have any advice? This is the one time I can say the internet could be your best friend mm. because you can find support groups. Okay. Um, I did join a Sarah's Laughter support group. Um, a what? We, it's called the oh, Sarah's, the Sarah's Laughter. Laughter. Okay. They had a support group in Nashville, and I actually did do that. In person? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Because okay. this was so long ago. This yeah. is, you know, I mean, long, I mean, seven years ago. Yeah. And I did go in person, and I will say I'm not a support group. I'm not. Um, I, Matt and I did do a uh, couples therapy mm-hmm. during adoption because. Was it helpful? It was. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not that we weren't seeing eye to eye. It was just, it's just so heavy. Yeah. Um, but the internet could be your best friend in this. The Instagram, find find groups that you can hear stories, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Um, the Facebook group that I said, the domestic adoption. Okay. Um, you'll see a lot of sad stories, but you'll also find resources like, hey, do you guys think this is a red flag? Mm-hmm. Like, she's already telling her friend she's naming the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. Um, that second birth mother had a baby shower. Like, why is she having a baby shower to not keep the baby? Right. Right. Red flag. Like, um, and sometimes you don't want to see them. I didn't want to see. I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't want to see them. I, I just wanted the end result. I wanted to be a mom. You didn't want to see what? Her red flags. The red flags. Like having a baby shower. Wow, yeah. in the world are you having a baby shower for a baby you're not right. planning on keeping? And you're mm-hmm. posting it online. On Facebook. Yes. Yeah. So, but use, the internet can be your best friend in this in this yeah. situation. And are they all like private groups? Like yes. you kind of have to. You have to prove. Okay. You have to like, yeah. you like, and domestic um, adoption, you cannot be an agency. You cannot be a consultant. This oh, has to be truly, this is truly, you are in the adoption process okay. or you are part of uh, the adoption tribe. So you felt like it was a safe space. You could ask anything. Okay. Anything. And then if somebody asks a question that you want to answer to, you can answer it. Mm. Um, it is, it, it's, the internet can be your best friend in this. And especially if you don't want to go to a support group, you want to yeah. hide behind the computer mm. because you're just not, you're, you just don't want to. Yeah. I mean, for me, the support group was kind of a last resort because like, I didn't have anybody going through it. I had a friend or two do Clomid and then they'd get pregnant. Like mm. it was never a big yeah. deal. Um, later, do you um, wish you had spoke more about it to friends or are you glad you kept it to yourself? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, yeah. it, it could it's go hard to either know. way. It's hard to know because Matt and I grew stronger in it because mm-hmm. it was like we had to be each other's best friend because even you didn't want to tell your parents that. I mean, all Do the Do you think sadness. there's couples, though, that grow apart because of it? Yes. Yeah. When well, financially. Yeah. I mean, think. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's I mean, a lot of All money. of it's a lot of money. And then, you I mean, you see all these people having babies, not spending any money, you know, like, mm-hmm. and you hear, you're like, I've spent thousands of dollars yeah. to do this. And um, gone through all these checks and legal checks to make sure you're a decent, right, a decent human, human being. being. That was hard. That, yes. that part was hard for us. He's like, wait, we have to go get fingerprinted. We but, have to go to the sheriff's department. Yeah. We have to, these people have to come into our house and say our house is safe. Oh, we mm-hmm. have to have a fire extinguisher on every level of the home, like including the screen and porch because it's two mm-hmm. steps down. Like the things that you have to do, you're like, but I'm a good, and I understand. I yeah. mean, but you're also like, but there's people coming out. Like if you ha- if you went into the hospital and had a baby. No one's not, asking you. Nothing. Where's your fire They just want to know you yeah. have a car seat. If you yeah. have a car seat, Heck, they don't think they check the expiration date. They just want to know you have a car seat. Yeah. They do the car seat check and you're yeah. on your way. They don't know where you're going with that yeah. baby or what's going to happen. But here I have to prove, show you my last like four years tax return. It's like, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's all worth it in the end, but I got my happy ending. You got your happy ending. And have I'm, you heard of people that didn't get a happy ending? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that wait older because there's um, on that um, Facebook page, you'll see a lot of people in their 50s that, you know, are trying and a lot of birth mothers aren't going to pick. They're going to... Someone in their 50s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though they're probably a sweet and lovely... And now there's a lot of people that they do pick because they think, okay, here, you're you're fiscally responsible by now. You've you've yeah. been through all the bumps and bruises yeah. and, you know, but yeah. yeah, you mean you see people that finally give up and say, I just can't take it anymore or I can't yeah. afford it anymore. I mean, adoption is not affordable no. and people fundraise and we had thought about it at one time and then Matt said, this is, this is our burden to bear and mm. we will figure it out. Um, and I don't think fundraising is bad. I understand. Yeah. Like, I totally understand. Not everybody can do it. I totally yeah. do not think fundraising is bad. Just Matt said, he said, even when I did other things in life, I didn't, I was not a big fundraiser. Like right. I'm not knocking on everybody's door to buy the Boy Scout candy or yes. whatever it is, popcorn, whatever yeah. it is that they sell. He was like, I just, that's not, so we're, we're a little more private mm. than that. So. And I think too, the point is that it's everybody's journey is different and everybody, every birth mother's journey is different. But I think 
you know, I said this to you at the beginning and outside, if, you know, if this can just give, like when you said, I didn't have anything to listen to. And that's why, you know, I'm saying to you, like, I, I would love for, you know, you to share specifics because if this can help one person or someone listening to this daughter is going through this or sister's going through this and just to give them some information, a resource, a place to go, encouragement, um, even just to feel like they're not alone, then that's the goal of of yeah, this. Podcasts. So look mm-hmm. up podcasts. Yeah. There there are podcasts about adoption. There are. Yes. Okay. Um Brave Love I know has one. Um again, I don't listen. I have I don't listen. I yeah. do uh, Instagram. I'm all over their Instagram. I listen to all Brave these birth love. mother okay. stories. Um, we'll put it we'll put all the um yeah and I can see links you, you said all there yeah we'll put them up at the end. They are such a great resource. We have a friend recently that had to do with a um um you mm, I'm like mm, mm, sounds like what? Somebody that gave up a child for adoption, and I gave them all these resources because I said it will help to see the beauty that Mm. can happen. It can be beautiful. Adoption can be beautiful. There are sad stories. I mean, there are sad stories, but it can be beautiful. It can be beautiful. And there's hope. Yeah. There's hope. Well, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here (laughs) and sharing. I thought I was going to lose it. No, no, you're so good. I'm so glad because I know a lot of your story in pieces, but there were— it. Just to hear it from... Can I say one thing? Of course. Something that's been said to me a thousand times since getting pregnant with Everett is, Mm. oh, I knew it would happen. Mm. It is like fingernails on a chalkboard because it doesn't happen for everybody. Okay. I mean, and I know that sounds crazy, but I mean, people are like, oh, I've just... this. I knew, and I'm like, there are so many people that doesn't. Right. I mean, there's so many people, people that I follow, people that it just doesn't. Adoption just doesn't. is adoption is it. And is that, it. Is, that that is how they're family. And that's fine. And it's fine. Tell us some things. Let's end with this. Tell us some things not to say to people who don't have kids yet, who you know are in fertility, who you know are in adoption. What do we, what, what, what do we say? Don't ask anyone when they're going to have a baby. You Just never don't. know because it could not be that it's fertility. It could be there's marriages in trouble. Right. It could be the husband works too much and it's not, it could be they just can't afford it right now. Mm-hmm. Like don't ask that question. That question got asked to me, especially once we had entered the five, being married five years, mm-hmm. like, well, why? What, what's the way? Right. And then once you are in it, you don't want to tell somebody that you just happen to see when you're at work one day, that's just an acquaintance because yeah, it's none of, it's yeah. really none of your business. It's really not. Okay. And then with adoption, I don't really know the answer to that because most everything that's been said to us about that's been beautiful. It was more the getting pregnant with Everett. Pregnant. Oh. Um, that every, I mean, and Matt and I both were like, oh, but we know that we know there's so many people that mm. still long. Like if I was, if, if I had adopted in my early thirties, I bet I would have long still to have another baby. Right. But I knew I was, I turned 40 right after we adopted them, mm-hmm. like months later. So I knew for me, that just, I, I mean, you don't hear of a ton of yeah. people having babies in their 40s. So that to me just don't, don't, it doesn't, it doesn't happen for yeah. everyone. So don't, because it happened for me, I feel beyond blessed. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, God whew, pulled, pulled a big yeah. one for us. Yeah. Um, but as far as adoption, I really don't know if I have anything to say about okay. adoption. I mean, other than people being negative about closed and open, but right. most people actually don't it's even ask journey. that. Yeah. And I would tell you, we don't tell people. Like, I don't mm. say, oh, my kids are adopted. It's right. really none of your business, and it's yeah. not your burden to carry. Like mm-hmm. I told you, I'd actually never even told their preschool teachers yeah. this year. They didn't know till the end of the year when I wrote a thank you note. Right. Um, because it, what is, they're just my kids. They're just your kids. And that's what, when we were leaving um, Pennsylvania, that's what the agency said. She said, if anyone says anything to you, they're your kids. They're it doesn't matter. Yeah. These, you're adopting these children. It doesn't matter yeah. how you got these children. Like, they're, they're your kids. Yeah. So. Well, I love that. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thanks.